Yo, ho, ho, da mafia. Welcome to yet another edition of Believe in Bills. That's right, the podcast where me and former safety of the Buffalo Bills, Aaron Williams, really just grace your eardrums with not only a Buffalo Bills previous game review, but a preview to what we will expect in the following matchup. In this case, against the New England Patriots on Sunday. Once again, say that you ever want to listen to the audio version of this and you want to get it early then you need to absolutely subscribe to either our Spotify or Apple Podcasts. That way you will be able to get it as early and as soon as possible. Quick reminder, before we dive into the content, I am giving away either a PS5 or an Xbox Series X the second that I hit 10,000 subscribers. To enter, it's super simple. Well, not really, but then again, I am spending 700 dollars on that in all seriousness guys to enter this contest what you need to do is you need to be a subscriber to this youtube channel and you need to like this video screenshot proof of that and so dm me on instagram with that screenshot for proof and following me certainly would not hurt either and so whatever you're doing pause this video and enter the contest make it happen i'm really really looking forward to giving this away once i surpass 10,000 subscribers. Without further ado, let's dive in. Yo, ho, ho, Bills Mafia. What's going on? Once again, it is your host, Dan Mitchell. Man, it's the way the kid himself, Aaron Williams. Ah, uh, welcome to another edition of Believe in Bills. Five and two. We definitely have a lot to talk about from last week and this coming week. But first off, I need to hear about your trip right to Orlando. This past week. First of all, shout out to Harry Buffalo and all the Bills Mafia members that need to know, go to or downtown Orlando to a bar called, called Harry Buffalo's. So lit. Harry it Buffalo's. was so lit. I had a chance to hang out with a lot of uh, Bills Mafia fans or Bills fans, I should say. And uh, it was a good crowd, man. Like, at least... 200 plus people came. I would want to guess. I don't know if that's right or not, but it was a packed, packed bar. And oh, they showed a lot of love. I took pictures and signed autographs and stuff. And a lot of the fans got me drinks. So I was a little drunk. So, nice. yeah, man, I had a great time. It was zero complaints. I had zero negative uh, thoughts. Everything was positive. So, yeah, man, it was great. And as you should, I mean, I just like saw your Instagram story and stuff like that. Like you were standing on tables and stuff like that. Just sort of, you know, and doing yeah, your I'm thing. Just, man. You know, being me, man, just trying to, the whole thing is about the crowd and about the fans. It's not really about me. I'm just there to like encourage the vibes to go even higher. You feel me? So it was, it started real quiet at first, but then I think people started loosening it up. They started buying drinks and we started taking shots together and, it was a great time, man. It was a great time. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Like, I mean, I was always curious to, like, hear, like, the reactions, especially after that game on Sunday. Like, the field goal only game. Yeah. But, so hey, the vibe and stuff like uh, that? Man, honestly, we were, we were semi-watching the game. It was just, <laughs> that's, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, yeah. We were just talking about I, – I just want to get people's input or, like, hear their thoughts on, like, what made them a Bills fan. I was really talking to people more than paying attention to the game because it was so boring and so slow. Oh, yeah. But we did celebrate every field goal that was made. So uh, we definitely made it a, a party for every field goal that was made. And, um, yeah, man, it was, it was more about just hanging out with them than more of, like, me focusing on the game like making sure I know what what I'm going to say for this pod. But I was too busy just hanging out with the people, man. It was, it was crazy. I can't wait to do it again. Yo, listen, like, I mean, that definitely makes a lot of sense. And because back in college, I mean, like, I'm not sure whether or not that there's like a horse race or anything that goes on like around Texas and stuff like that. Oh, but yeah. right in South Carolina, there's this place called the Carolina Cup. And it's like this giant horse race. But mm -hmm. the running joke is, is, is that – if you see a horse, then you did not go to Carolina Cup. That's the entire thing. Like, the entire thing was just this giant tailgate. Like, this was back in my frat days and stuff like right. that. You know I mean, if you saw a horse, then you just didn't do it right. And yeah. I feel like that's the experience that you had this past Sunday. Just Pretty much, man. 
beautiful. It's pretty much how exactly how it went down. So, uh, but speaking on that game, man, should we be worried? Should we be worried about only not even putting the uh, the pig skin into the TD and into the tug section? Like, what's going on? Like, what? Yeah, we need some explanation. You know, I need some answers. I need some questions that need to be answered. I mean, honestly. And so it really took me a while to like think and reflect and look back. And there's really two different ways that you could look at it being, Hey, you know, we did end up barely beating the worst team in the NFL. It was just an 18 to 10 victory right at the end of the day. But then you also need to account for the fact that it seemed like our defense finally woke up during the second half. I mean, Darnold only threw for four yards the entire second half. So that's something that's bad, so to be that's relatively bad. excited about. And then Josh Allen, I mean, he still had like a solid game. I mean, led his team down the field on great drives. But at the end of the day, what killed us was the damn penalties, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we had like 11 penalties for like 104 yards. And I think we handed the Jets like free gift wrapped first downs just from those penalties alone. So – my concern is just the overall discipline, but I'm not necessarily sure that we need to play that aggressive, especially against a team like that. And I'm almost curious to hear your thoughts on that, right? Like you obviously take each and every single team seriously, but has there ever been a game where like the overall game plan is like, Hey, listen, we don't need to play this aggressive. We just need a dub. So no, never. It's never like I've actually never heard a coach say we're not going to play this aggressive this game because of this. It's literally every game we're going full out. If your record is zero and sixteen or zero and fifteen when we play you guys, we're going full out. Like there is no, we're going to take this game off. I mean, that's a little different when I. I mean, I never been given an opportunity to where we were. 13 and three or 13 and two and needed our guy to save our guys for, you know, the playoffs. I have never been that in that atmosphere or in that environment. So I can't answer for that, but literally each week, man, you're playing your, your butts off. Like it's, you're not taking a game slightly. So uh-huh. the, for, I'm going to go on my de- defensive head right now. Do it. Our guys did our jobs. 10 points. I'll take 10 points every freaking week. I'll take that every week. But for our guys to not put one tug in it, come like, well, not one on a, against the Jets, it just – I'm happy we won. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy. But coming from a different side, it's like, what do we – we got to – now we got a, a good test, you know, against New England, who has a better defense than they the do. Jets. They do. It's like – we have to bounce back even stronger, man. Like, I'm not saying 18 points. I'm saying 18 points is – it's a lot because we scored a lot because it's all field goals. You feel me? Yeah. But, like, to, for us not to put any any tugs up against the Jets is, like, a disappointing just for me as a fan because I'm so excited and so hyped for the offense because of what we have as weapons. Mm-hmm. We got to do a better job, and I'm going to be quite frank. We got to do a better job on offense. No, yeah, like, I mean, 110%. Like, that's always, like, made me wonder, too, because – and so I know the old cliche that it's any given Sunday, but, I mean, I feel like it's been like this with the Bills for as long as I can remember. Like, we struggle against, like, teams that, like, we should, like, completely wipe the floor with, but then one random Sunday, we just lay it on a damn contender. And I feel yeah. like there's at least, like, one or two games like that each and every single year. One where we struggle against the dumpster fire – and then another game where we just beat the shit, like, right out of the contender. Like, why is that, you think? Any given Sunday, man. It's literally yeah. even any given Sunday. Like, <laughs> any given Sunday, right? Some days are just meant for that one team. Other days it's not. You know, it's – it's. I don't know. It's hard to explain, man. It's just like one week you're on, and then the next week you're off, and then the next week you're, you're semi-on. And it's mm-hmm. not like you're not trying to be on. It's not like you're want, you know you don't want to give out give a hundred percent uh effort out there. It's just like like a like for example, like going to your going to your job. 
yeah. some days your job is amazing and even though you do the same shit some days it's more it's amazing than others that's just how football is as well like some week yeah. bills are going to put up 38 another week they're going to put up 17 and hopefully the defense <laughs> only gives up three you feel me so it's like yeah. it's give and take so it, i mean shit happens and so from a defensive player's mindset like back in the day like say like one day like the defense was just like balling out and so like your offense just like isn't really recuperating like they're not returning the favor like have you ever like gone up to like your offense or something like that be like yo what the fuck man hell yeah yeah you know as a player that's never good for all players or people or anybody that's listening yeah that's ever in a situation like that man (laughs) stay your ass on your side yeah mind yours okay because just like if the defense was struggling we don't want another offensive player to come on our side and say hey you guys are playing like shit even though they are maybe right it's like yeah. we already know. We don't need our teammates to even bash, <laughs> bash more. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't put us down even more. But yeah, sometimes it is just like a, a wake up call, just to say, "Hey guys, let's go. You know, get your shit together. We got your back, but come on now, let's go." It's like it's okay to, to, to. You know what I'm saying? Give it a little heads yeah. up. But I've been wrong. This is when I'm a younger, my younger years. I used to be wrong all the time, and I used to go to. Fred or, or Stevie and be like, yo, what's up? Like, come on. And then they're like, yo, yo, kid, my, go on your side. Don't worry about ours. And that starts fights, man. So you never want to like, as a team, you want to keep your, keep your team up. So it's like, if you see them struggling, be like, hey, we see you guys struggling. Don't worry. We got your back, but let's go. Pick your shit up. Let's got, let's, like, let's get it. Instead of saying, you know what, guys, we see you guys sucking. <laughs> yo. Get your shit together. What the what fuck, the my fuck? guy? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, te- that's terrible. So, I've been on both ends of the spectrum. So, yeah, man, it's tough. It's tough. Oh, my God, man. I could only imagine. I could only imagine. But, and so that game's out of the way, dude. We're five and two. Yep. And for the first time in a long time, we're playing a Patriots team, which don't get me wrong, I'm not sleeping on the Patriots. And so, I could care less that they're two and four. They still have Bill Belichick. They may have lost three straight. They may have question marks on offense. I know that Edelman's going to be out. I know that they just have a second-year player in Nikhil Harry, who has been struggling tremendously. They have a quarterback in Cam Newton who's been struggling tremendously. But, I mean, I'm still nervous about this game. And a lot of it has to do with the fact of the weather that's going into it. And for some reason, it seems like Josh Allen's kryptonite has been shitty weather, and he's going to get a double dose of that shit on Sunday. It's supposed to be like 40 mile an hour gusts, like pouring rain the entire Sunday. So, I mean, I honestly don't really know what to expect from this game. I mean, one would think that we'd pound the rock, but it all have depends. We really, have we really showed that we can do that this year? I mean, it all, with the wind, keeping that in mind, sometimes going with the wind, you air that shit out. Oh, for you sure. You bombs away. You bombs away. Now, when you're going against the wind, then you got to go, you got to think about, it's probably a little bit more intermediate to short pass throws, not much as as far as deep threats. Mm -hmm. But Singletary, let's go. Like, your turn. Let's let's, let's see what our our rushing game, even though it has, it hasn't been the greatest. Nah. In the last, this pretty much this season, to be honest, we got to, let's, let's, keep the ground game going to open up the pass game because when we do have the win to our side, Diggs, let's go. We're going to air it out. Brown, let's go. We're going to air it out. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Let's, we need to air that ball out. And so there's not many quarterbacks out there that I think would benefit more than the wind going with them, especially with Josh Allen. I mean, shit. I mean, that guy can just basically bomb something 70 yards without even, like, doing a crow hop. I mean, let alone with 40-mile-an-hour winds going his way. But, I mean – we need him to be accurate, man. We, we all do. that's the thing about Josh. We all know he has a strong arm. We've been saying it before before we even got him. Before in the draft in the draft room, I'm sure they were saying that. We've been we saw a video of him throwing a fifty yard ball bomb uh on his knees. Like we we know you can throw the ball strong. We know you can throw the ball hard, we know you can throw the ball far. But can you be accurate? That's that's what makes that's what differentiates uh, Aaron Rodgers to a Josh Allen. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we all know Aaron can throw the ball far too, but he's also accurate. 
So we, I, you know what? Have we had a game where we had strong wins? Because I think the only kryptonite that he has is just when it rains. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely. We, we don't know yet. So the win could actually be in our favor. So who knows? It could we're be. Praying that it, we're praying that it's in our favor for sure because mm-hmm. we, need, we need this, especially to a team that's, that's down in the and with, with their season right now with New England not being the old New England as we know it. But at the same time, like you said, Bill Belichick is still the head coach. Cam he Newton is. is still Cam Newton. He's not like a bad quarterback. He may be struggling, but he's still a threat. So, yeah. We can't sleep, but I, I, I like I like our chances in this one. I think our defense is going to keep strong, uh, and our offense is going to finally wake up, man, because that that last week, man, we don't – It was rough. Oh, you know, I'm glad our field goal – our kicker made his field goals. Don't get me wrong. But we oh, need yeah. To that pick scan in the, in, the, in the end zone. Yeah, dude, we definitely do. We, <laughs> we definitely do. Like, honestly, man, like that game last week, and I felt worse about that win – that I felt about the Tennessee Titans loss. I let's can see it, that. <laughs> let's put it that way. That. Right? And so at least our offense like played well, like we just ended up handing them gifts for field position, but who knows? So I ended up hitting Twitter the other day for the question of the day. And this is actually a defensive question, which I think that you'll be able to answer pretty good. Um, this one comes from Joe Schmo seven, nine, four, seven, one. And he says, hey, Dan and Aaron, what's going on? Love the show. Um, since we are playing the New England Patriots, who have been struggling tremendously with the pass game, they are known to be a run-first team. Since Edelman is out and since with Nikhil Harry's struggles, your defensive game plan going into it, and I think that we should stack the box – and we should run man coverage on their struggling receivers the entire game, especially since Cam, especially since Cam Newton has proven that he cannot beat us with his arm. What are your thoughts? I don't see no lie there. I mean, no. you go with a guy like Cam Newton who is known not to be accurate, um, has has trouble finding his receivers when they're open sometimes. Yeah, let's let's – Let's fill that box up and then let let our secondary do them. Yeah. I feel like we have I have enough uh faith in our in our secondary to handle New England's receiving core, especially with Edelman not playing. Not very not many named guys that will peel the top off off the off our cornerbacks or even our safeties at that point. So I'm I'm actually down with a game plan to to load the box up, blitz, put some pressure on Cam, um, mm-hmm. and let our and let Trey White handle his guy. Exactly. <clears throat> let Poyer, let Micah High, let whoever else is going to be out there, let them do them, and and let's see how much pressure we can put on the quarterback. That's the game plan I would think going into it. Yeah, and so honestly, like right now, when I look at this New England Patriots offense, that really seems to be their only option is running the ball. And, like, the two games that they have won this year, they've ended up putting, I think, close to, like, 200 yards on the ground. And, unfortunately, that's something that the Bills have been struggling with. So, I mean, at this point, I mean, why not test it? And, I mean, why not make Cam Newton beat you with his arm? Because it seems to be his weakness at this point. So, what's I mean. Our, what's our deal with um, – what's our deal with the uh, injury report? What's, uh, what's our report there? <laughs> It's definitely tough. Micah Hyde is still in concussion protocol. Uh-huh. Um, so that would be a detrimental blow. Uh, there's a couple that rookie Cam Lewis, he is still questionable. Same with Quentin Jefferson, a huge piece right in our defensive line. But as far as our offense is concerned, it, it, it looks like John Brown will be back. And it looks like our offense is going to be relatively healthy. But we still just have a couple of pieces missing from our defense. Like what about our linebackers? We get on the linebackers end because that's I think that's one of our biggest flaws right now is that linebacker just not being healthy is definitely you can see a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would also dictate what happens as far as defensively scheme wise of who's going to be our starters in the linebacker crew. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know that Milano uh, had a red non-contact jersey on today, but I think that they were just kind of slowly trying to ease him back in because he played last week and I don't think he re-aggravated anything, but I mean, he'll be back 
And then Edmonds, I mean, he's been struggling all year, but I mean, he just had like a shoulder issue since the beginning of the season and was listening to a few takes on like what the Pats game plan would be. And they think that they're going to attack Edmonds a lot, especially due to his struggles. So, I mean, we're going to have to try and scheme away, um, scheme around away, you know? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, it's not too bad. It was the injury report didn't sound like it's crazy. So yeah, um, I think we're good, man. I think it's just going to be the good. weather. And so it's just going to be the weather, man. And so what weather conditions did you hate playing in? Like, like what was like the thing? Where um, I hate playing in rain, honestly. Do you? And I don't know why. I, should, oh, I don't know why I hate playing in rain because really when it rains, you don't really get as much opportunities of, of getting the ball in your hands because, you know, past the game is not as uh, – it's not, it's not as used much when it's raining. Yeah. Um, but – I don't know, man. Maybe because it blurs up my vision because I wear an advisor. Oh, an advisor I, I mean, game, bro. Yeah, man. I hate playing a game without advisor. Like, I have to play my game with advisor. Like, it's part of the yeah. swag. But other than that, I say rain. I love playing in snow. Nice. Uh, love playing in the heat. I mean, just anything but the rain. That's why, I don't know, I hated playing against Miami, especially at Miami, because even though it was predicted to – to be like a clear day, sunny, in like yeah, 15, sunny. 20 minutes, man, like it poured out of nowhere. So, yeah. And so I think that's every day in Miami, to be honest with you. It's just, just like – Just like guessing what the, what is going to be. Exactly. Yeah. It's basically just flipping a coin at one point. But, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, with this Sunday, it should be pretty exciting. So, I mean, let's just go on ahead and move into uh, – <laughs> Let's go into final score predictions. And so the Bills – go ahead. I'm definitely going to go 24-10 on this one. Damn. Okay. Yeah. 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 With and that's the Bills with... or the Pats? Oh, hold on now. We never – we never. We never, <laughs> we never pick against the Bills. That, that's for uh, sure. 24-10 to our Bills are pulling out. Uh, with a struggling New England, their guy element down. I think our defensive guys come in and hold them to 10. Our guys finally wake up. I say they put – I say they put – I say mm, – I want to say they put three tugs up. Oh. But I'm going to say two and then some some um, some field goals. So, 24-10 is my prediction. 24-10. Nice. I happen to have it be super close. I think it's going to be 21-10. to 10. Uh, I think Josh will find the end zone once, but I think all of our touchdowns will be on the ground. I think Josh will run one in, and then I think either Moss or Singletary Ooh, are going okay, to run. Okay, we're going there. If we're going there. Okay, you're going detail now. Oh, you're getting a little. I'm all going right. detail. Going yeah, I'm detail. going detail. Okay, I'm gonna say. Um, I'm gonna say uh, Brown get no, no, no. I'm gonna say Knox gets one. Okay. I'm gonna say Knox gets one, and then Brown gets one. And then Dick's got to get one. I'm going for my boy Dick's got to get one. He got to get him one. And then, you know, obviously get that last field goal in. So there's my predictions right there. Tyler No, I took that back. I took that back. I took that back. I want to sing, <laughs> Singletary to get one, get a tug in there. So Singletary one, then Brown, then Diggs. And then even though maybe Josh Allen might run one in, but who knows? I'll go Interesting. with that right now. Interesting. And so, I mean, that definitely makes some sense, man. I mean, like, I'm definitely going to be looking forward to watching the game. It is the day after Halloween, though. And uh, Oh, yeah, what are you doing for Halloween, man? Dude, I'm going down to this area where I'm from. They're having, like, this big outside thing. So I'll probably do the bar hop thing. Um, Dressing up? Sure am, dude, of course. What do you, so what is the costume? And so my girl is going to be a bottle of Dos Equis, and I'm going to be the most interesting man in the world. Of course. Okay. Easily. 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 All right. And so all what's right. yours? I'm actually not dressing up for shit. <laughs> um, come on, my guy. Really? Yeah, I know. I'm, I think I'll barely have candy for the kids. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to leave a bowl out because I don't know, man. I'm not the biggest Halloween guy, but I, I am for the kids, so I definitely have, like, the best candy in the block. Oh, yeah. So, I bet you do, bro. Uh, I have that ready And the king-size but- candy bars and shit? King size Snicker bars, got some gushers in there. You know, Ooh. just some some stuff that's slight. You know, some slight, and uh, probably have to go to a party, but okay. I'll be just showing up as myself. So, okay, cool. 
Yeah. And so just throw your pads on, bro. I don't even have pads here. <laughs> no, you don't have the any pads. Thing I have is my helmet. I think I yeah, I have two years of my helmet here. Yeah. But they're all signed. I don't think I have one. Oh, there's one. One of my game worn ones up there. But yeah, I don't know. I might just walk around with my helmet on or something. Who knows? Yeah. And so, like, I mean, like, you could definitely be creative. And so, just have your helmet on or something like that. Like, rip, like, rip a shirt or something. Like, say, like, be, like, be I mean, like, you're like a football player, zombie or some shit. Zombie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. Who knows, man? Who knows? Oh man. That'd be a little, a little. That'd be a little. Um. What's the word I'm looking for? That would be like annoying to kind of carry a, a helmet around the whole night. Honestly. Yeah, dude. Exactly. You know man. I, mean? <laughs> I don't want anybody to steal it either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure, dude. For sure. Um. <laughs> yeah, dude. But I mean, this Sunday should be exciting. I mean, I'm definitely hoping for a dub. I think six and two is real realistic. And then of course we have the gauntlet coming up, uh, where we play the Seahawks. Then we play the Cardinals. And then I believe I believe we play the Chargers after that. But I mean, I think that right. this is a must win for us. Let's not only because exactly yep. because not only say that we do, there's really no like alternative reality that they can win this division because they would be four losses down in the column, and they would legitimately need to run the table for the rest of the year. And <clears throat> the and they have the hardest schedule right in the NFL. So I think this is a must win. I think we will win. And I think you and I will be very excited once this goes down. When was the last time we won our conference or division? I should say. 90, 94, 93, 95, actually. 95. Really? Yeah. Uh, Oh, wait, no. Yeah, it was. It was. When when was when was the when was the when was the the Tennessee game the hell the hell Mary? Oh, you mean girl, the Music City Miracle Music bullshit? Music City Miracle. And didn't that was ninety nine. Did we so, win that? Uh, right. we we made the uh, we made the wild card that year. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. 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 The same so, ninety five man. That's crazy, bro. Let's put it this way, right? The Indianapolis Colts won the AFC East more recently than the Buffalo Bills did. Jeez. Yeah. And so, sure. and so the Colts are, yeah. and so they're not even in our division anymore, which yeah, is terrible. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's been 95. And yeah. uh yeah, man. I mean, it's going down though, you know? Like, I mean, I feel confident it's happening. This is the year, and uh we'll see what's going on. We'll see what's we'll going on. See, man. We'll have to see. Yeah. Well, hey, Bills Mafia, once again, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another edition of Believe in Bills. Say that you're listening to this on audio. Do us a favor and leave a review. We really love hearing your feedback. If you want to sort of throw out some of the personal feedback, then definitely reach out to us on Twitter. My handle is at Real Dan Mitchell. And I'm AJ Williams23. Yep. And so, I mean, we absolutely love that. And then say that you're watching this on YouTube, smash the fuck out of that like button and make sure you tell a friend just is what it is. But yeah. And so you have any closing remarks, Aaron? Man, thank you everybody in Orlando who showed me hella love. Much appreciated. I'm excited to see our boys go six and two. Yes, I do believe that we are going to win again, 24 to 10. Oh, Bill's Mafia, sticking, sticking ride guns. your wave. Don't forget to stay wavy. Stay wavy. I love it. All right, Bill's Mafia, thank you for tuning in. We will see you next week. Let's go, Buffalo.